It's still the case that boardrooms and upper management in the banking and finance industry are still dominated by men. That's despite years of complex, costly programmes to address the issue and a growing appreciation of the benefits of diversity and inclusion. But a lot has changed in the industry over the past 30 years. And joining us now to look at this are Anita Kimber, partner EY Financial Services Digital and Innovation Leader, and Connie Lung, Senior Director of Financial Services Business Lead Asia at Microsoft. Welcome to you both to Cybos TV. Anita, I want to start with you. Just give me an idea about your own leadership role, because this is something you really understand, the issues that we've raised in that introduction. Absolutely, I do. 30 years and I'm still talking about it. It's um, depressing but also energizing. So I lead um, teams and, and we service our clients in financial services to help them in their digital and innovation journeys. But I, you know, it's ridiculous. I find it such a difficult question because you know, a, a male-dominated model would suggest that I should suggest I should say how many thousands of people I lead and it's all about a big army, some Roman legion. But actually, I think female leadership styles are often different than that and it's actually about outcomes in, and impact that we make so that that's what I try to do okay. in the bluntest of terms does discrimination still occur in banking and tech or are we beyond that oh gosh I wish we were beyond it I um, it we will be on it we will be beyond it when I can walk into a room and not count the number of women or when I don't take picture walking into Cybos of <laughs> a sea of uh, grey suits as we all queued up. So no, we're definitely not beyond it. There's more to do. Okay, more to do. Connie, is that your perception? Where do you see discrimination? Well, I think in Asia, where I come from, it's a very diverse region with many different cultures. And in terms of discrimination, there are basically two. One is really age, seniority and years of experience. And the second one is about gender. And I think in terms of age, it's nothing to less to say that if you're more senior, you'll be respected. If you're less, then you're not. So very often, if you're young and inexperienced and your voice is really not relevant, and then you, that for that matter, you'll be discriminated. And for women, I think it's worse when it is a man-dominated uh, society. And in many countries in Asia, we will be viewed like less skilled, less educated, less talent. And so we will be presented with fewer opportunities. And I think that is still a problematic for us. Anita, clearly still work to be done, but what progress do you believe has been made to reduce discrimination? Do you know, the fact that we're talking about it mm. means that there's progress being made. The fact that I can sit in um, partner promotion panels and call out subconscious, unconscious bias, that, um, that means that, that we can face into the problem. The fact that when I talk to a group of young consultants, which I did before coming here, and, and talk to them about the fact when I first started work, I wasn't allowed to wear trousers, which is just Excuse ridiculous. Me, you were not allowed I to wear trousers. I, I walked into my <laughs> first day wearing a pair of trousers and told never to do that again. And they had that reaction. You know, that shows us that we've had, we, we've made progress and that they're, that, you know, they're facing into a different set of challenges now. And I'd love to get Connie's perception on this because obviously women are allowed to wear trousers now <laughs> in tech <laughs> companies. <laughs> Only yeah, we, we've made some progress. <laughs> Let's celebrate. We've made some progress. But I mean, from your perception, do you feel that the changes are happening, but perhaps the pace mm. isn't fast enough? Well, yeah, I, I will share another story on my earlier career. I think uh, not being in the men's club, you know, networking yeah. in the bar, it feels yeah. that I'm discriminated. Yeah. And I think the journey that we have to do to educate and teach our men, society and our peers is fascinating. And I think we made progress. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, I think we've been speaking a lot in the panel. I was just talking about I'm mostly the only women on the panel. But when you talk about diversity, Early on, the panel will be women. Now, at least we see more men. Yeah. And it would be nice to get a men's perspective and understand their challenges and it kind of complete the cycle yeah, of information. True. I think that's what we need. So I've seen making progress, but I think the fact that we're still talking about it is mind-bordering. Yeah. So this is something that I think from our perspective, we really need to be acting like a role model. And the fact that like I was uh, the 25 woman in, uh, in FinTech in Hong Kong actually gave us a platform to advocate and also become a role model to tell that you know, women can be you know, in the voice and we can actually come up with a better diversity and inclusion and see how we can do in our FinTech society. Mm -hmm. A yeah. question to you both. Why do you think we are still facing the same issues with, with FinTech startups as we faced in banks and tech companies uh, alike? Why are we still seeing male domination? Do you know, I think you, you hit the nail on the head there, which is it's about role models. Um, 
people people aspire to what they recognize and so the more role the more role models we get the more success we'll get so I, you know people like Ann Bowden from Starling and I know Starling are here today the fact that they step forward Connie from Bankify they, they step forward they tell their stories that will inspire more and more women the Rose report that was commissioned by the government here in the UK which talks about lack of support for entrepreneurship in general points that out you know we, we've all got to help each other and that's how um, and, and I, lo I love yeah. the fact that you point that out because that's that's how we'll change things that's how we'll break down those barriers right I think in the fintech world unfortunately it's true is there's still ma more men in tech than women so yeah. there is a perception that you know it's still a man dominant in fintech but the reality is the female entrepreneurs they actually have a higher success ratio yeah. the VCs are more confident in investing in women yeah. being the fintech leader and I think that is really a good sign for our industry. It's just that we need to do more. And not just a woman being a role model. I think having awards like you know, the 25 mm. women's leader in FinTech is good. But having a man talking in the panel and also talking about diversity and doing more inclusion, how they handle the men's side of thinking on dealing with the inclusion, not just gender. I think really we need to include more people's voices and to our peers and to our industry. I think that's something that we need to continue to educate yeah. and advocate, and it's all of us, including men. Yeah, and, and Anita, do you think that if you look at fintechs, we need special female support in that area? And isn't there the danger that if you implement something like that, it could stand of it stands of being accused of being discriminatory because it's, it's geared towards women, it cuts out the guys? My heart bleeds for them. No, <laughs> no I mean... Uh, Oozing sincerity Absolutely, there. <laughs> absolutely. Um, no, we need to do more. I mean, patently, the situation that we face into um, is, is wrong, and we're, we're, we're missing out on that amazing amount of talent in the female fintech space. So at EY, we run a program called Entrepreneur of the Year, and we've actually started... Um, providing coaching and support to female founders. Now, lots of studies show that women and men, and this is very generic, but have different attitudes to risk, for example. So unless we face into that and unless we provide that support, we're just not going to unleash the talent that's accessible to us. Mm. So take that brave step. Absolutely. Mm. Connie, you work in the, in the tech space. Uh, do you think technology can help removing discrimination in, in the recruiting process? Well, definitely. I think uh, if you use some of the uh, technology and also the AI algorithm in an ethical way, it certainly will improve on the process and also to eliminate some of the biasness. The question is that is when you use data to actually come up with some results, the data is, when you think about data, it's really not the data that you have, it's the data that you need. So a lot of people think about the data that you have, and then if it doesn't represent the right sample or the right customers or the profile, then you obviously come up with the wrong result. So I think dealing with the data and actually ha having a more diverse and inclusion of data of your database of people and the profile will help. And then I think diversity has to go beyond the recruiting process. So I think that having a digital feedback loop, you know, how you recruit, how you have people, how you deal with the customer and your services, and having the feedback loop continuously back will help you improve your diversity and the inclusion. So I think technology does help with the algorithms and with all the, the communications and the digital channels that sometimes can break down the barriers when you have languages barrier, you have, yeah. you know, um, blindness, like we have mm -hmm. a seeing AI app from Microsoft that, you know, our blind engineer can contribute to the work that we do and make it better. So I think that is where technology can bring the, the better part of people and empower everyone to be contributing. Yeah. And I uh, think that's important. Uh, and let's stay with that idea of, of, of technology because, Anita, can it reduce discrimination, for example, in an interview situation? Do you know, I'm with you. It's, um, you've got to be so careful. It can, but, it, but I read um, a review from a, a software firm that was producing this sort of technology and it sort of trumpeted the fact that, you know, we can take the best looking uh, leaders in your organization and we can, we can look for those characteristics in interviews. And the trouble is that the best looking leaders are likely to be men. So you, I think you've got to be really careful with it. So the whole ethics of AI and understanding the decisions and the algorithms mm. that you're feeding right. into these things, absolutely critical. Anita, you've mentioned what EY are doing, but why is it that less than one in five partners in FS at EY are female currently? 
Yes, is a good point. It is. Uh, it's a valid point, and we are we are troubled by that because we don't represent society. We don't represent increasingly what our clients look like. So we don't love that statistic, and we are working really hard to change it. So. Um, we're increasing the number of internal promotes. We're being really active in the market around external promotion. But the reality is, and I sat next to a, a partner from a law firm last night who faced the same issues. We've got, we take 50% um, graduates in, including in tech, which is fantastic. So it's a 50-50 gender split at graduate. And then we're faced with that um, gap at a partner level. Something's happening in the mm. middle that we need to face into. And, and it's not one simple answer. We've all got to work really, really hard on translating that 50% to that 50%. What does that mean, therefore, that perhaps more male partners should be disciplined for discrimination? <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, Anybody, anybody who does anything wrong, anybody who, who discriminates should be sanctioned, no doubt about it. Um, John Neal, who's the new CEO at Lloyd's of London, is doing some amazing stuff in a really traditional organization saying, do you know what, drinking at lunchtime, being lecherous in the afternoon, these things are not good enough. And even if um, it means an impact on revenue, you know, we'll do it. So in the old days, when I was a, when I was a junior, you, you'd, you'd have some of the characters and, and there was all this macho language about, mm -hmm. yeah, well, they bring home the bacon, you know, let's, let's, um, let's overlook that, let's turn a blind eye. I think those days have gone and there are no blind eyes that we should, we should turn anymore. Mm. Connie, what advice would you give a young woman starting out now? Well, I think it's not just for women. I think for any young person starting, it's really to pick something that you're passionate about, that's something that you will be able to contribute. And don't, understand, don't underestimate your own capability because you don't need to be a mature or a very experienced person to be able to contribute. I think everybody has his own strengths and also learn from your role models, as we say, you know, the leaders, and also advocate into your peers. So how you can be more collaborative and I think don't be shy also to voice your opinion and challenge the status quo, right? Challenge to something that you believe in and challenge something that you can bring onto the table and be bold about it. I think that's really what we need. And also, you can't really have a, I would say, work alone in this world because the world is very complicated. So you really need to be a team player. So you need to have a growth mindset. You need to be able to understand differences and bend in and lean in to help each other. Be generous about what you can contribute. So even though you're young, there will be you know, digital capabilities because you're born in the millennial, you know, you don't have a legacy. So there'll be a new concept, new ideas that you can contribute. So lean in, help each other, be collaborative and be bold. And I also think that uh, not necessarily women, but men, but also be able to understand how they're thinking, the different generations of thinking and how you can contribute to our society overall. I don't think we need to discriminate each other. So I hate to say you are all old fashioned, young, millennial. I think those words should be gone. Yeah. We're just I agree. And yeah. we all live in the planet to achieve more. Yeah. Let's start learning these lessons early. So let, let's take the, the example of the, of the young woman. She's, she has an aspiration. She's moved on. She's become a trainee. She's on the first rung of the career ladder. And that's when it's really hard. You've got the dream. You've just started realizing it, but it's moving on from there. What advice would you give to that young woman? We've all been there. With the exception of yourself, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I've been discriminated. Because <laughs> he's not a woman. <laughs> um, what a, do you know, I'm so inspired by the energy and the commitment that's coming through. I, I, as I said earlier, I, I've talked to a group of our uh, younger women and they, they're showing that generosity of spirit. You know, they're reaching out to the school kids. They're encouraging those women in STEM. So I, my... My advice to them would be to maintain that generosity of spirit. But the other thing, I, I love what you said about boldness. I was told early in my career to, to fill the chair, to, to, to feel that you have the right to be here and that your voice should mm. be heard. So I, th I just think continuing, feeling that you have the right is really important. Yeah, because women often feel quite uncomfortable actually claiming that right, don't Absolutely. they? Absolutely, and, and why should they? You know, at, at the end of the day, our voices are valid. We represent... Um, a big part of the consumer base at the end of I the day. I think women are 
perceived to be conservative, right? We are shy to put forward our, you know, promotion. We were, if we are like 60% fit the criteria, we will not be put forward versus a man will probably put forward for a less than 50% fit. I think this is something that we need to shift our mindset a little bit to be more bold. I think this is something that uh, we have to also learn. I mean, over the uh, history of profile, we understand this is the behavior of women. I think this is a good yep. benchmark of data that is how we can self-learn and also be benchmarked against something that we can also, you know, lean in as a, as a man's society. So boldness, a good habit to acquire. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> now, we know there are many ways in which someone can be discriminated against in the workplace, but the, the key one really is money. Why are women still paid less than men in the workplace? I don't know, it's outrageous, isn't it? It's completely outrageous and it shouldn't be so. And not only is it fundamentally wrong, and I would urge every leader who's watching this, male or female, if you've got a woman who's earning less than their male counterpart, put it right. You know, there's nothing that stops you. I remember taking over a consulting group in Australia and finding a woman who was paid 30% less than her male counterpart, high performer, who's now a partner, um, which uh, she's amazing. Um, and I went to HR and said, we need to increase her pay by 30%. Oh, no, we can't do 30%. We'll need to do that gradually over years. No, no, just put it right. So it's wrong. It needs to be dealt with. And the repercussions of women having earned less than men over the years are outrageous. In the UK, we've got 1.5 million women um, coming up to retirement who don't have a personal pension. You know, they're going to um, rely on a state pension because they have earned less throughout their whole career. And so, you know, these, these are systemic issues that cannot be allowed to continue. So if you've got a male leader who's watching, put it right. Absolutely. And, and Connie, the final part to you, because look, you're already approaching this from the tech side of things, mm. but how do you think your, your culture actually supports diversity and inclusion in that sector? I think the key thing, I mean, speaking from a Microsoft perspective, right, we, our new C, our CEO Satya has been promoting a growth mindset, right, from a know-it-all to a learn-it-all. I think that culture shift is quite important for us, and this is where we have seen that big transformation, and we call it DNI, diversity and inclusion. Yeah. Yeah. So I was actually lucky enough that I wanted to, to be part of the DNI group, we team globally, and how we can influence the culture of DNI within Microsoft. And hearing our peers and you know networking the people, how the geographical differences are, and also um, learning some of the best practices, I think that is quite important. And on that basis, we were able to actually teach our customer or even share with our customers some of these best practices. Because I think today tech is a very important to our industry for the first time. If we look at the last five years, the industry has gone through a massive change over the last 20. Yeah. And that change is, part of it is due to technology disruption. Mm. And I think this is the right moment for DNI culture shift. Because when you think about change, the key thing there too, one is cultural and the other one is tech. Technology yeah. drives the cultural transformation. Cultural transformation drives technology adoption. Yeah. They go very much hand in hand. And I want to pick you back on the ethical AI piece, because when you think about data, how you use the data, I think to some extent as a tech vendor, we are kind of accountable for the use of technology yeah. in a responsible way, accountability way, and an ethical way. So what we've done is we have an ethical AI that we have published. On the other hand, we also have an AI business schools to teach our society how to use data algorithm in a responsible way way. So this is a continuous education and exercise, but because of the DNI culture of managing change, having that cultural transformation is the right time for us to all lean in. And as role models, I think we need to continue to become an advocate. And that will improve diversity. And actually having a technology adoption and us to be promoting that as leaders and being a role model, I think that will help drive inclusion. I think yeah. that's something I, we need to I, do for our society. I agree because, uh, and at the end of the day, um, people will want to work for firms that are facing into this. And you right. talk about Microsoft facing into it from an EY pe perspective, facing into it. And, and women and, and people who, who have felt excluded in the past will vote with their feet if we don't face into these things. I just hope that, you know, sometimes I, I felt discriminated when you say I'm the only woman and why should I feel that one, right? I'm, I'm in the cyber, I can tell you I'm in the cyber meeting many years now. I was only one meeting that was five women in the room only, and all of us called it out. Yeah. And you know what? That yeah. was the only meeting in my many years of cybers. 
Yeah. And today, I will tell you, 90% of my meeting is five men, six men, one woman. Yeah. And I don't call it out. Yeah. I <laughs> felt that it's the norm because I don't think it's discrimination by saying that. But why should we feel that it was yeah. odd? Mm. And today, we have three women on, on the table, which to me I is know. odd. But do I have to call <laughs> it so out? thank you for joining us. You should be just called human. This is what I was saying. <laughs> we would love to speak to you further. It's certainly been a fascinating discussion. Still work to be done, of course. We'd love to chat to you at future Cybos and see the progress progress that has been made, or even better, not have to speak of it at all, yes. uh, because well, yes. so much progress has Absolutely. actually That's the thing, the day that we don't talk about it, it's just dropped from the conversation, we know that we've actually succeeded. Couldn't well, Anita more. Kimber and Connie Lung, thank you very much for joining us on Cybos TV. We hope you enjoy the remainder of Cybos 2019. We will. Thank, thank you, you for having you. me. <laughs> thank you.